Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about read, interpret, and apply specifications and manuals in today's lecture. So the learning objectives are identify and access manual specification, interpret manuals, apply information in manual, and store manuals. So the first is identify and access manual and specification. Uh, this is a common uh, manufacturer's service manual, although, of course, these are used already. These are very much used. See, this is even 1982 and this is 2002. So a manufacturer service manual, or sometimes it's called a shop manual, is written by the automotive manufacturer for the technicians in their dealership. So a shop manual covers one model and one year of the vehicle in great detail. Sometimes it is printed in a number of volumes also. Shop manuals are the best source of detailed service information for specific cars. So shop manual or service manuals are necessary to obtain the desired specification for a specific job. It also provides drawings and photographs to show where and how to perform a certain procedure in a particular car you are working on. Special tools or uh, instruments are listed and shown when uh, they are required. Precautions were given to prevent injury and damage to the parts. And automobile manufacturers publish a service manuals or set of manuals for each model and year of each car. These are or the cars, I should say. These manuals provide the best and most complete information of their cars, although the manuals from the different manufacturers vary in presentation and arrangement of topics. All service manuals are easy to use after you become familiar with their organizations. So shop manuals are divided into a number of sections, each covering a different aspect of the vehicle. The beginning of the sections commonly provide a vehicle identification and basic maintenance information. The remaining sections deal with each different vehicle system and each section has an index indicating more specific areas of information. The manufacturers uh, manual, uh, service manual. Uh, the shop manual contains three basic information. The first is diagnostic or troubleshooting information. Second is they contain a step-by-step -step repair procedure. And the third is the specification chart. And we'll try to see them uh, one by one. Specifications are technical data. These are numbers, clearances, and measurements used to diagnose and adjust automobile components. So, a specifications included as part of the service manual. It is already part of the service manual. And uh, they are usually considered precise measurements under standard conditions. So example of specifications include the valve clearances, the spark plug gaps, the tire pressure, the number of quarts of oil, ignition timing, and the size of the engine. Just like uh, any other gadget, the, there are also specifications of cars. So types of specifications, we have the general engine specification. This identifies the size and style of the engine. They include cubic inch displacement, engine codes, fuel systems, uh, systems bore and stroke, horsepower, torque, compression ratio, and normal oil pressure. The second type is the tune-up specifications. So this specification helps identify adjustments necessary for tune-up on the vehicle. This includes spark plug gap, firing order, uh, degrees of ignition timings, fuel system uh, settings, and fuel pump pressure. Then you also have the capacity specifications. These specifications include identifying the capacity of different fluids on the vehicle. This includes the cooling capacity, number of quarts of oil, fuel tank size, transmission, transaxle capacity, and rear axle capacity. Okay, you also have the overhaul and maintenance specifications. 
So this is used to aid technician in serving the vehicle. This includes distributor advance at different speeds, valve seat angles, valve stem clearance, piston measurements, ring end gaps, bearing clearances, shaft end, play, and many more. So this specification helped the technician determine how much wear has occurred and the mechanic then is able to decide whether or not to replace the con component in question. Usually, maximum or minimum clearances are given for this purpose. Also, we have the operational specification, which is the specification that tells how the vehicle is, uh, is to be operated, what type of oil to be used, and so on. Some of them are found in the owner's manual, though. Other specifications include tire inflation, uh, type of gasoline to use, tire size, and general information for the operator of the vehicle. You also have the torque specification. Oh, it is important to torque each bolt or not correctly when replacing or installing a component on the automobile. Torque specifications are used for this purpose. So this torque specification should be used in place of any standard bolt and not torque specification. Then we have here an owner's manual. Okay, this is Mitsubishi FT. Zero. Tapos, andito yung kanyang owner's manual. So, an owner's manual or an operator's manual is a booklet that comes with the new car. Parang cellphone lang yan. So, may manual yun kung paano gamitin. So, this manual usually explains how to operate the automobile's control and accessories. In addition, the owner's manual provides a great deal of technical information that can be useful to the technician. In an owner's manual, a vehicle maintenance procedure is provided so that the owner will know when to get needed service. Then you also have the aftermarket repair manual. Uh, an aftermarket repair manual is most often used by the technician at in independent repair shops. So ito, this manual is called an aftermarket because it is published by uh, independent publisher and not by the car manufacturer. Like the shop manual, this contains information on troubleshooting, uh, specifications, and step-by-step -step repair procedures. So the different car models and years instead of just one because they are covering more models and years, they typically cover topics in less detail. Then we also have the VIN, the vehicle identification number so the official vehicle identification number is needed to identify the exact type of vehicle be being worked on so the vin is also used for title and registration purposes it is normally stamped on a metal tab that is fastened to the instrument uh, panel close to the windshield each manufacturer has assigned a vin uh, to each vehicle manufactured, each VIN number represents uh, different data. So the following information can be determined by reading the VIN number. We have here the country by which the vehicle was manufactured. Uh, next, the corporation and division, model or series, uh, model year, body style, check digit, engine type, factory or plant code, and then the vehicle serial number. Now, how do we interpret manuals? So, diagnosing or troubleshooting information, um, one type of troubleshooting guide is the diagnosis chart. So, this chart, this uh, the first part, lists the possible problem. Then, it is divided into three areas. You have the condition, the cost, and the correction. I have in here a sample. So, fuel system diagnosis. The following diagnosis, diagnostic procedures are for fuel system problems and their effect on vehicle performance. So we have their in, engine cranks normally, engine starts stalls, and so on and so forth. And ito yung condition niya, possible cause, and then the correction. So this is a fuel system diagnosis. Next is the procedure information. This gives the step-by-step -step to follow the to follow in doing a repair job. 
So the procedures are usually numbered in a step-by-step -step order. Below is an example of step-by-step -step procedure to follow in replacing a cylinder head. So this one is a cylinder head. If you're going to replace, here is what you're going to do. Let me just read. Raise and support front of vehicle, then drain cooling system and disconnect exhaust pipe from manifold. Lower vehicle and remove oil dipstick tube and air, air cleaner. Disconnect wire connectors and vacuum hoses from carburetor or TBI unit. Remove EGR valve base plate from intake manifold if applicable. Disconnect heater hose from intake manifold then remove air system discharge tube attaching bolt from intake manifold. Then uh, the re uh, steel remove ignition coil lower attaching bolt then disconnect wiring from coil. Disconnect all wiring from cylinder head and intake manifold, then remove engine upper support attaching bolt from engine strut. Remove AC compressor and position aside with refrigerant lines attached. Remove alternator drive belt, then remove air pump bracket. Disconnect throttle and throttle valve cables from throttle lever and intake manifold. Then disconnect upper radiator hose from uh, cylinder head. Then disconnect air hose from tube assembly if equipped. Remove rocker arm cover and then remove rocker arms and push rod. Then remove cylinder head attaching bolts. Then lift cylinder head and intake and exhaust manifold as an assembly from cylinder block. Then reverse procedure to install. So you're going to start from the uh, last going to the first then coat heads and threads of cylinders bolts with suitable sealing compounds then install bolts finger tight tighten cylinder heads bolts in proper sequence types of specifications we have the general engine specification here is an example okay then you have the tune-up specification here is an example. Then you have the capacity specifications. Here is an example, the cooling system and capacity data. All right. The overhaul and maintenance specifications. Here is a sample. So for pistons, pins, and rings. Then you have the operational specification. Here is a sample. The torque specification. Okay, one that's the sample. Applying information in the manual, of course, the procedures for finding specification is you have to identify the type, model, and year, locate the VIN, uh, select the appropriate re uh, year, uh, refer to the first table of contents in the manual. Uh, on the inside cover and page number that covers the type of vehicle, then turn to the page and read the index of service operation. Also, you have to look for the engine rebuilding specifications page number and turn to that page. Engine rebuilding specifications are shown in various tables. Often, these specifications will be listed according to the size and configuration of the engine. Also, pay attention to the footnote. Uh, VIN information can be found in referring to the first table of contents. And then, e, of course, if you're going to keep your manual, then you have to store them properly and make sure that uh, they will not be um, subject to wetting and uh, cockroach infestation or insect infestation. So you have to be careful in... Uh, storing your manuals. That's the same thing with storing your books. And that's all for today's video. Thank you so much. Happy repair, repairing. I'll see you next time.